I have a business customer who has this particular machine. Uh, she's out of state. She's quite a few hours away from my location. So I could not service her on site. So I told her, why don't you take this PC to Best Buy to Geek Squad? I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to help you out. All you have to tell them you have eight gigs of RAM and you have a hard drive and you would like to have a solid state drive, at least a 512 or a one terabyte. It could be a 2.5 SATA just to make it easy and just get at least 16 or 32 gigs of RAM and you should be good to go. So she packed up the computer, took the computer to Best Buy. They started coding out the price for this upgrade. They said the data transfer will cost you $99, giving you a new solid state will cost you about 70 bucks. And yeah, we can give you some more RAM. It's about $70, depends on how much RAM you need. And also gonna be $30 to install that RAM. So we quickly approached to $250-ish. But then they said, okay, you know what? This is a business class PC. This has DDR4 RAM. We know this could be uh, a trouble and we, we don't have any DDR4 RAM. That's a generation behind us. We're only dealing with DDR5. We're not doing it, not even doing a data transfer. Just take this PC somewhere else. So uh, <laughs> funny thing about these business class machines there is truth in it. Uh, I mean, it's not super difficult to find the right RAM. If you're just tossing RAM randomly in a computer, you might going to get some RAM uh, which will not be functional compatible. And even if they are compatible, what we ran into with, with Dell at one point, the replacement RAM worked flawlessly. But when we tried to put the top cover on, the replacement RAM was about a quarter inch higher than the original and you could not shut the lid down. So, yeah. Um, it's, it's not super difficult to get the right stuff. You might have to go to different sites like Crucial or Kingston and use their product identifier to find the right RAM. Then you take the guesswork out, just go into Amazon and keep ordering different sets of RAMs. Hopefully that something will work. Amazon has a bunch of options, which actually works. With a Dell, I have a previously really good experience from generation six. Uh, or or seven all the way to, to 13, uh, I can use the same RAM from Amazon and it worked in every single case, no issues whatsoever. Why don't we turn the, the computer on and see what we have here. So this is, I'm not familiar with this particular Lenovo. This is the uh, Idea Center 5, I believe. I was not involved to order this PC for a client about three years ago. For some reason, it has a regular hard drive. And if there is a silver bullet for a slow computer replacing a hard drive with a solid state, uh, you have multiple options for this particular model. Uh, you can use a 2.5 SATA or you can use an M2. It's up to you. Uh, the M2 is, uh, is uh, significantly faster, but could be a little bit more difficult to install it. This is a super fast, affordable option to have a 2.5 uh, you can just use a little uh, USB caddy to use this drive and comes with a free software, Samsung Magician. You just plug the new drive into this little $10, $15 USB dongle and then plug it into the computer and then select the free software to clone everything, all the settings, all the information, remove the old hard drive, put the new solid state in and you're up and running. The computer has no idea what just happened, except it will be super fast. So let me try to log in and see if we can pull any kind of information out of this PC. As you can see, it barely moves. It barely works. I don't even have the login screen yet. And once we're getting into Windows, there's going to be a minute or two just to run anything. Okay. So normally when I do troubleshooting slow computers, the first thing what I check is task manager. Uh, once I click on task manager, I would like to see, uh, at least one thing right off the bat that the computer was rebooted. This is almost a number one reason why the computer is running slow because it hasn't been rebooted months, uh, weeks, best case scenario. So if you are clicking on the performance tab, uh, you're going to see a counter in here, especially when this PC is going to get there. So as you can see, uptime, it's uh, uh, zero days, zero hours, two minutes and, uh, and five seconds. So this computer was rebooted recently uh, people normally missing it because then they click on a start menu hit shut down they're hitting shut down which is technically a sleep or a hibernation it will not reboot your computer anything 
uh, has been loaded into the memory or read it into the temporary files, everything's still running in the background, you need to hit restart at least once a week or at least every 10, 15 days. Uh, that will speed the computer uh, significantly. 30%, uh, 40% of the tickets on a slow computer can be closed just by hitting the start menu and hitting restart. I'm going to go back in here and see if anything is in a red or anything close to 100%. As, as you can see, the disk usage is about 100%. I also am using a free software. It's called Hard Disk Sentinel. Doesn't matter which version you download from their website. It's a malware or spyware free for sure. I've been using this for, for over a decade. And when you launch this, obviously the computer is running super sluggish and super slow. It will take some time uh, to get the data uh, collected from the PC. But in the first main screen, this gives you uh, an army of information about the drive. Uh, all we have to do is just looking at the first screen, looking at the performance and looking at the health. And if there is any problem with the drive, it will tell you it's, it would be advisable to replace it, see if the drive is overheating, see if there's any issue with the performance. And when we look at this software, it will tell us that there's actually no problem with the drive. And also when I'm looking at the applications running in here and disk uh, to be running for 100%, I see the antivirus and I see Lenovo stuff and I see Windows updates, I see browsers. So everything is cycling through. It's not just one particular application hogging uh, uh, the drive uh, and crippling the other uh, speed on this uh, on this disk so that would be one thing you might gonna see just one application in here and if you uh, if you terminate that single application and if the disk usage returns to normal then you have the culprit but in this case unfortunately that's uh, that's not the case we're gonna put a solid state into this machine and we're going to compare the performance after that. So what else can be if the computer is slow? Uh, you're going to see that if the CPU usage just by idling in Windows, that could mean uh, if you see 30, 40, 50 percent that the CPU is uh, is uh, it, it is not might be not enough for up to date work. Maybe it's an older computer or uh, something is also using the resources or a computer just need maintenance. I cannot emphasize how much it actually helps clean out this computer. Just the case, make sure the cold air intake coming in is not clogged. The CPU cooler has been removed, dusted, and new thermal paste for a couple of dollars. Doesn't have to be metallic. It could be silicone, which you can cause no harm. Uh, just a very thin layer put it back. I see the CPU usage on a three-year-old computer going down from the 30% baseline to a two or 3% or under 5% baseline. On a, on a seven years uh, old computer, I can see this coming down from 50 to 60% to 3%. Uh, I just did the computer a couple of days ago and I could not believe the result, how much the CPU user utilization went down. Also the memory or a RAM utilization, obviously eight gig. If I start loading up a couple tabs of browsers nowadays, that's not, not really enough. You would need 16 gigs of RAM at least. Uh, I will set this PC up with 32. Any branded computer I'm noticing, uh, uh, there is a smart feature in a BIOS, which they usually disable it. It's not enabled by default. They claim that it can slow the computer down if the customer puts a third party drive in it that can cause uh, compatibility issues. Uh, I never seen it. Uh, I Anytime I put a new computer out, I always turn a smart feature on for a customer. So if anything, the drive is having issues, the BIOS is constantly, the, the motherboard is constantly monitoring and it will tell you at the next reboot. That can save your data, that can save uh, you a, a couple hundred dollars of repair down in line because if you know your hard drive is going out, you can still back it up, probably clone it and put the new drive in it and you're good to go. This feature has been disabled. I think the manufacturer just hoping that the drive will limp along until it passes the warranty and then they don't have to deal with it, but you have to deal with it. It's still better for them. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this PC down. I asked the customer uh, if uh, she wants to, to me to clone everything from this hard drive to a new solid state drive, or she would prefer a clean install. She went with a clean install. Uh, any problem, obviously, with uh, 
with a computer, uh, if you fixed uh, the cooling, possible cooling issues, you have a solid state drive, you have enough RAM, you made sure that no Windows application is hung, it still could be infected, it still could be a bad driver, it still could be something which we can't pinpoint or pick up. A clean install would be a good option. So I went to Microsoft.com, downloaded a Microsoft Windows 11 installation disk and just put it on a bootable uh, thumb drive. We're going to make a video about that. It's super easy and just literally clean install the computer from scratch. Went to Lenovo, downloaded the Vantage app and downloaded all the drivers, all the Windows updates. And we are ended up with a pretty responsive, fast computer in, in about uh, half an hour. So. I'm going to ahead and shut this down. I think I'm at least I'm going to try to. It uh, doesn't matter if it shuts down properly or improperly. Uh, this is the last time this hard drive is actually running in this PC. I, I promise that. Let's talk about this Idea Center 5. I never seen it before. I can see that it has a sticker on it that says Core i5 Gen 10. Just by looking at the Gen 10 uh, sticker, every generation uh, is uh, last about a year. We are in 14 generation. So this is 10. So this would be about four years old. It's possible uh, that this PC was assembled later or sitting in a warehouse or something. So maybe this is just three years old or something between three and four. Uh, there's a way to tell specifically. But if you go back to task manager and looking at uh, the performance or a CPU, you're going to see model for your CPU, just type that CPU in, like Intel i5, um, I don't know, 10,300, and release date, and that will tell you exactly when that processor was released for manufacturers or for the public uh, to assemble computers. That's a very good baseline to tell how old is your computer, even if it's an AMD or an Intel, doesn't matter. So uh, I'm just gonna I'll go ahead and unplug the power cord uh, because uh, I already have a solid state ready to go for this machine. Uh, let me unplug all the cables. Uh, funny thing about this, uh, again, Best Buy quoted about $250, $270 just to upgrade uh, the, the drive to a solid state with a data migration and put more RAM into this PC. I went to eBay, $279 already refurbished, already has everything in it. Uh, all you have to do is hit the power button on it. So it doesn't work really to put at least here in the United States to too much money into these computers. It's just, it just doesn't make sense for $600, $700. You can get a generation 13 with 16 gigs of RAM, a 250 or a 5 volt SSD. If it's on sale, seven, $750. The labor is so expensive in here. I know in other parts of the world that's different, but here in a, in a US, uh, any type of work we have to put in a three or four year old basic desktop, it doesn't make any sense financially. Because uh, what if the power supply goes out the next year? What if the motherboard fails? Uh, what if uh, something else uh, comes up? So let me pull the side cover off and see what we have here. Um, so, um, okay. Looks like we have a same method, just like this would be an HP or this would be uh, a Dell to pull this front bezel off. It's a little bit chunkier and thicker than I normally see. However, I don't see any dirt or any dust uh, in here, which would be uh, my way to looking at this. There's see any, any problems with the cold air intake. Uh, I don't see anything. Looks like this, uh, this area in here is clean. Uh, normally people miss the front bezel to cleaning out. And on a Dell, I can show you some examples when this is completely stuck up and clogged up and a PC just cannot get fresh air. So that could be a big performance uh, issue if the PC cannot get uh, fresh air because uh, it's definitely going to be on a higher running on a higher temperature and also going to be a lot of throttling. If there is a silver bullet to speed up a computer, uh, this is the one and only. This is going to give you the best performance upgrade uh, for the least amount of money these drives are yeah pretty much done so the fan almost looks like just like the dell fan uh, so all you have to do is remove these four screws take the fan off i would not use compressed air neither an air compressor to clean everything out in here this was dusty and dirty uh, all i did this i used a brush a regular paintbrush and brushed everything off very nicely. I was holding down the fan and clean everything out. Take the fan off, clean off uh, the heat skin and uh, clean out also 
the CPU itself. I'm using just a silicon based thermal paste. I'm not using metallic based, uh, metal based, uh, anything which would conduct electricity. This is super safe to use it on everything. Um, this is my choice. It's not a gaming computer. Uh, the, the thermal paste, the shape, whatever we do and replacing after three, four, five, six, seven years is going to be significantly better uh, than not doing the job. Uh, let's see if we can put everything back as we should. Uh, I see these are lined up. Uh, this is clipped in. Let me put the CD-ROM back in. Uh-oh. There we go. So hopefully this PC is ready to go as it is. Uh, I'm not going to put these screws back in just yet. I'm going to connect the power supply back in. So as you can see, uh, in seconds, we are in. Let's see if we can pull up Task Manager without waiting uh, for a minute to load and have all the data. So as you can see, the disk usage is down to 2%. The CPU usage is 3% and our memory usage is about 11%. When I get this PC in here with the eight gigs of RAM and with uh, the regular hard drive, uh, this was about 30-40% just to idling in, in Windows. The disk usage was 100% solid and the memory usage was about 20-30% almost constantly. So cleaning out the PC, putting a new solid state, adding more RAM to the PC definitely helped. Again, you really have to look at your cost and your location. Does it even make any sense for a business customer? This customer probably going to be able to use this PC for another three or four years without any problem. Before uh, I'm, I'm going to leave, I'm going to tell you that I have this Dell Inspiron laptop. It's a 15 inch laptop. It's a budget laptop or student laptop running a little giveaway. If you are uh, interested to, to entering the contest, all you have to do is send me an email to this particular email address, just send me an email in the subject line, put Lenovo and I need a partial shipping address, just the house number, the name of the street that will serve as a future verification, no zip code, no town and no, no state. Uh, again, this is just for future verification, just to avoid uh, scammers. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video. Scott's out.